welcome to Watch Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 PG-13 horror movies that are actually scary. This is the part where you run. For this list, we're looking at the movies that manage to be terrifying even outside the R rating. To clarify, we'll be looking specifically at those classified as PG-13 by the United States Motion Picture Association since the rating's inception in 1984. So any older film that's been retroactively given that rating won't be considered. Which of these is your favorite? Leave a PG-13 comment below. Hey Mojoholics! For a chance to win cash prizes, play our live daily trivia challenges every day at 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern only at watchmojo.com play. Number 20, The Woman in Black. This was quite the departure for a Daniel Radcliffe fresh off the conclusion of Harry Potter, but he certainly knows how to pick them. Set in the early 20th century, the movie sees him play a lawyer who's tasked with collecting the documents of the deceased owner of a creepy marsh house. But of course, the place is haunted. Right off the bat, the atmosphere of this film is next level, with the dilapidated house and boggy surroundings enough to send chills down your spine. But the execution of the frights is also impressive, with the titular spirit delivering more than a few jumps. Number 19, Megan. Speaking of unsettling titular villains, Model 3 generative android, aka Megan, exists firmly within the uncanny valley. Even when she's trying to be your friend, she's always learning, and the things she learns are not always nice. You need to learn some manners, Brandon. <laughs> you know what happens to bad boys that don't mind their manners? They grow up to be bad men. <laughs> Megan may not be the most original techno thriller, but what it lacks in ingenuity, it makes up for in wit and well crafted tension. We know Megan is going to betray her prime directives, which only makes it all the more satisfying when she finally does harm people. But perhaps the most frightening thing about this movie is how plausible it all seems, as rogue AI might just come in an unsettlingly chic package. I have a new primary user now. Me. Number 18, Cloverfield. Perhaps the only thing better than the movie itself was the genius marketing campaign, as we barely knew what to expect from Cloverfield. When we finally learned it was a found footage monster movie, we were not disappointed due to how visceral it all is. We surprisingly don't see a whole lot of the attacking kaiju, but by putting us in the character's shoes, the movie allows us to feel what it would actually be like in such a chaotic situation. And for those who don't consider it a traditional horror movie, we direct you to revisit the cringe-inducing subway scene. <laughs> the franchise would continue its penchant for PG-13 thrills with 10 Cloverfield Lane, but the less said about the next one, the better. <laughs> Number 17, Signs. We tend to forget it, but M. Night Shyamalan has been fairly consistent about keeping his offerings PG-13, and his early career stuff largely remains his best. Sure, we like to rip on signs today for bungling the climax, but don't pretend you weren't thoroughly creeped out by the earlier set pieces the first time you watched it. <laughs> Despite showing very little of the aliens, the movie manages to make what we don't see the scariest. Sprinkled throughout are scores of eerie moments, with excellent use of buildup. And then, when we finally do get glimpses of the little gray people, we can't help but fall out of our seats. Oh. Come to think of it, let us get one of those tinfoil hats. Number 16, The Last Exorcism. Another found footage film, this one follows Cotton Marcus, a reverend who's since lost his faith. He performs exorcisms as a way to delegitimize them, but things take a turn when he accepts the case of a farm girl named Nell. While Marcus initially thinks Nell is merely disturbed, it eventually becomes apparent that her possession is very real and very sinister. We're gonna go now. We're gonna get you in the car. Are you okay? Nell. While found footage horror may be old hat today, the last exorcism shocked audiences back in 2010 with its clever staging and horrifying imagery. 
The shots of Nell contorting herself into unnatural positions will be enough to make your stomach churn. And I say, put on the whole of armor of God that he may be able to stand the wiles of the devil. Number 15, the skeleton key. What took you? 2005 Skeleton Key boasts an exceptionally spooky setting, using a rundown mansion in the Louisiana bayou to weave a mysterious tale about hoodoo. Kate Hudson stars as Carolyn Ellis, a hospice nurse who is dragged into a dark conspiracy by unknown forces while caring for an elderly man. Because I know a spell too, Ben. One that makes you better. Though it was released to mixed reactions, The Skeleton Key features a tense atmosphere, along with some memorable moments during Carolyn's exploration of the mansion. The film concludes with a disturbing ending that is sure to stick in viewers' minds for a long time. A bit harder than the lawyer, wouldn't she? It's harder every time. Number 14, Ouija, Origin of Evil. The first Ouija is the worst case scenario for what a PG-13 horror movie can be. The prequel, Ouija Origin of Evil, is practically the best case scenario, but that's to be expected when you have Mike Flanagan at the helm. <laughs> Despite technically being based on a board game, the movie actually manages to channel some effective scares through it without feeling tacky. Such is the appeal of Flanagan's brand, which has consistently found a balance between scares and feeling. To that end, the film's leads do a tremendous job of selling the theatrics on display, both physically and emotionally. I just wanted you to be able to talk to Dick. He's gone. He lives in the dark and the cold and screams and screams and screams. Our planchette shifts to a hard yes on this one. Number 13, Mama. Daddy, there's a woman outside. Before the success of 2017's It, director Andy Muschietti broke into the mainstream with this haunting gem. Like most of the movies on our list, Mama relies on old-school tension building instead of violence and gore to generate its scares. It tells the story of two children kidnapped by their murderous father, who are rescued by a mysterious spirit they call Mama. After years alone in the wilderness, the girls are found and returned to civilization, but Mama isn't quite ready for them to leave. The mystery of Mama's identity is unraveled over the course of the film by an almost unrecognizable Jessica Chastain as Annabelle. And the film's ending culminates in a terrifying showdown. <laughs> Number 12, The Mothman Prophecies. You're reading my mind, aren't you? Loosely based on a 1970s conspiracy theory book, 2002's The Mothman Prophecies dives into the West Virginia urban legend known as the Mothman. Richard Gere plays reporter John Klein, who becomes obsessed with the cryptid following the tragic death of his wife. After a strange occurrence while traveling through Point Pleasant, West Virginia, John begins receiving ominous warnings he believes are from the Mothman. They just come right out and tell us what's on their minds. The film maintains a creepy atmosphere throughout its runtime without having to use gore or overtly mature themes, garnering a rating of PG-13 without sacrificing any scares. Number 11, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Who knew that a kid's book series could be so effectively adapted for film without losing its younger audience? Well, such is the talent of producer Guillermo del Toro and director Andre Erverdal. Me, I don't you, Walker. Are you shitting me? Whereas most horror movies have to fill a runtime with different variations on the same scare, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark has the benefit to reinvent itself for each terrifying sequence. It sees a group of friends being written into stories by an alleged deceased witch. And the star of these stories? their greatest fears. The monsters on display are genuinely terrifying, particularly the pale lady, who we are positive was designed using nightmare fuel alone. Number 10, 1408. We don't need to remind you of the pedigree of one Stephen King. 
While most of his adaptations go the R route, this one proves that you do not need a ton of blood to bring his brand of horror to life. You have a Based on King's short story of the same name, 1408 centers on an author named Mike who's made a living debunking so-called haunted houses. But like the protagonist of The Last Exorcism, he learns ghosts are very much real when he checks into one hotel's room 1408. No. No, no. The evil room does a good job of breaking down Mike's staunch disposition with a series of well-timed frights. And we'd be lying if we said we aren't screaming the whole way too. Are you ready to check out, Mr. Enslin? No. Not your way. I understand. Number 9. The Others I'm beginning to feel totally cut off from the world. Chilean Spanish director Alejandro Amenabar crafted a frightening ghost story able to scare audiences and critics alike with 2001's The Others. Nicole Kidman stars as widow and mother Grace Stewart in the horror period piece, which takes place shortly after World War II on a rural island in the English Channel. You told your brother that there was someone else in the room. There was. You're lying. I am not. The Others is a classic but effective haunted house tale with genuine scares and striking visuals. The film eventually comes to a truly shocking conclusion that provides chills aplenty despite its PG-13 rating. The horror throwback garnered several awards, a rarity in the genre, and became a financial success. I am your daughter. <sighs> You're not my daughter! No! No! Number 8. Drag Me to Hell Love you. Surely you can be dissuaded from taking this insignificant woman. Directed by horror legend Sam Raimi, 2009's Drag Me to Hell delivers both tense scares and campy humor as a young woman attempts to escape from a curse put on her that promises to send her to hell for eternity. <laughs> Similar to Raimi's classic Evil Dead 2, Drag Me to Hell features over-the-top humor thrills and gore that might be off-putting to some, but undeniably give the film its own unique sense of style. The movie features an evil talking goat during a seance, an attack by a murderous elderly woman, and an elaborate fight inside a grave. Drag Me to Hell is a wild ride from beginning to end. <gasps> oh my god! Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> Number 7. The Sixth Sense I see death. It's the movie twist to end all movie twists. M. Night Shyamalan's The Sixth Sense stars Haley Joel Osment as Cole Sear, a young boy experiencing visions of dead people, while child psychologist Malcolm Crowe, played by Bruce Willis, attempts to help him. The supernatural elements of the film are, for the most part, less in your face than typical horror movies, portraying the spirits as lost souls rather than vengeful ghosts. Dinner is not ready. What are you gonna do? There are a few exceptions, however, including one notably creepy appearance by a young Misha Barton. The Sixth Sense is able to balance fear with humanity in a way that proved to stick with audiences and critics long after its release. Don't say that it tastes funny, you know? I don't like to hear that. Number 6. The Grudge Do you know a woman named Kayako? The remake of an R-rated Japanese horror film, 2004's The Grudge is based on the acclaimed film Juon. The Grudge stars Sarah Michelle Gellar as a young American woman who becomes caught up in a curse while taking care of an old woman living in Tokyo. Featuring a family of haunting ghosts and intense scares that push the boundaries of its mild rating, the movie was very popular with audiences in spite of its mixed reviews. The Grudge eventually received an unrated home release, containing scenes that were cut from the theatrical version to ensure its PG-13 rating. But the theatrical cut remains chilling all the same. Number 5. Lights Out Esther? This intensely creepy film is the story of a woman plagued by a ghost who can only manifest itself in darkness. First-time director David F. Sandberg was able to make this surprisingly scary film based on the viral success of his initial short film featuring the same name and concept. Lights Out manages to touch on real-world topics such as depression, along with dealing out some truly gut-wrenching scares. 
the film was popular enough with audiences that a sequel has been greenlit, though it hasn't quite reached the light of day yet. <laughs> Number 4. The Exorcism of Emily Rose The Exorcism of Emily Rose is unique in that it's half horror movie, half courtroom drama. Loosely based on a true story, the film cuts between its two narrative arcs, one detailing the possession of a young woman named Emily Rose, and the other about her exorcist's subsequent trial following her death. While the legal case adds an intellectual angle to the proceedings, it's the first half of the paradigm that earns a spot on this list. <laughs> Emily's initial hauntings are disturbing enough, but the horror really kicks up a notch when she goes full-blown demonic. The performance of actor Jennifer Carpenter is unparalleled in the possession subgenre, and gives us the willies every time we see one of her twisted facial expressions. Give me a name, demon! Names! Names! Number 3. Insidious No PG-13 movie has been able to create moments of fright, quite like Insidious. Veteran horror director James Wan's tale of a young boy's struggle against possession features terrifying scenes we're shocked we're able to make it past the MPAA. What? The film's main source of horror is the alarmingly scary demon plaguing the family, shown only in brief glimpses before the climax of the film. Insidious is a PG-13 film that feels like it could just as easily be R-rated due to its sheer terror, and its sequels are no slouch in the scares department either. After seeing this, you will never hear Tiny Tim's tiptoe through the tulips the same way again. Number 2. A Quiet Place It's the horror movie that's so scary it actually got people to keep quiet in the movie theater. We've seen plenty of horror movies that play on the senses, but never this effectively, as the alien creatures who hunt with their hypersensitive hearing make for a lasting impression. A Quiet Place has more going for it, though, than just an inspired creature design. Time and time again, it manages to construct creative set pieces, which our protagonists have to delicately and silently maneuver out of. We are constantly on pins and needles when we watch this one, and the formula is so solid that the sequel hardly misses a beat in the same department. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Ring And what they say is, you will die in seven days. Here's the second remake of a Japanese movie on our list. Few modern horror films have been able to permeate pop culture as much as The Ring. Naomi Watts stars as Rachel Keller, a journalist who uncovers a horrifying videotape that curses viewers to die after seven days. Seven days. <laughs> Rachel's ex-boyfriend and son also eventually see the tape, and Rachel must dive into the mystery behind it to save herself and the people she loves. The film is well known for its nightmare-inducing imagery, like Samara crawling out of the tape through a television. The popularity of The Ring would quickly jumpstart a horror remake trend that would last well into the 2000s. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.